Okay, in this section, I am going to show you how to make some materials before you dive into making your fabric paper. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to do um, some uh, color some cheesecloth. And the reason why we're going to do that is because we're, be, we're going to actually integrate some of the cheesecloth into the fabric paper. Um, which I've done here. So sometimes it's fun to just color it before you actually make the fabric paper so that it c creates a little bit more interesting characteristic versus just white. Also, I want to show you how to prep up some papers so that you can integrate that into your fabric paper as well. So that's what we're going to do in this section. Um, we're going to start out first with um, coloring the cheesecloth. And I wanted to show you what that looks like. So here I've already actually colored some cheesecloth with different colors. We're going to use acrylic paints for this because that way when we go to use this um, with glue or Mod Podge and um, adhere it into the fabric paper, the colors won't run. So we have two different types of cheesecloth. Um, you can use either one. I found that the one that's unbleached and it's more, I think this is 100% cotton and organic, seems to take the color a little bit better. This one, for some reason, I think it's made for cleaning, tends to repel it a little bit. I mean, you can still use it, um, but I, I actually, I actually do use this stuff, but this might actually be better too. Whichever one you have, we can still make it work, uh, especially when you're using acrylic, and it'll still adhere to that. I'm just showing you the two different types of cheesecloth. So, um, and here are different types of coloring that I do. I like to use two different colors on it so that it feels like it's kind of blending and gradating into different colors. Um, and also, you're going to be using this even on your pages in your book of creative discoveries. Um, and I'll show you some examples of that. So what you want to do is you first want to cut out a small piece of your cheesecloth. And what I notice is that because the cheesecloth is actually overlapped a couple of times, you do want to unravel that. So you want to make sure that you don't have too much. Now you can like, this is the single layer right here. So I might just work with that and, um, and then cut some small pieces out. So it's easier to work with. You can also use uh, different types of cheesecloth that have different um, weaving. Sometimes there's some looser weaves than others. And um, I'll sh show you, for example, this particular weave, you can see how tight that is compared to this. A little bit looser. Um, this just adds, it's just a different look. It doesn't really matter. It depends on what you prefer. But I just wanted to show you that there are different weaves of cheesecloth out there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some acrylic paint. And the whole idea is you want your acrylic paint to be somewhat diluted. So you don't want to use the, the paint um, at 100%. Um, out of the tube because this full body acrylic will make your cheesecloth a little bit stiff. So you want to be careful to and make sure that you water it down a little bit. Um, also when you water it down, it um, will soak into the fibers a little bit more too. Okay, so I'm going to then 
I have a little butcher tray here so that I can actually put the cheesecloth in there. I'm also getting, I also have some paper towels so that after you color this, you can just place it on the paper towel to dry. So I'm going to create a little bit of color here. I like mixing color. Um, I don't like using it straight out of the tube because I was just what I call uh, muting the colors. So sometimes I like to just mix it first. And then I have a water bottle. So you want to kind of wet your cheesecloth. And I'm going to put a little bit of water in my plate so that I can get that paint a little bit more diluted. And then you just want to brush it on your cheesecloth. I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush here. Um, you don't have to worry too much about how it's going to look because when you're cutting these pieces off, it doesn't matter. Um, so, and it adds a little bit of interest. So like I said, make sure that your paint is pretty watered down so that it gets into that those fibers and threads and also um, it doesn't thicken up or stiffen up your cheesecloth. So what I like doing is I like adding um, a variety of colors on my cheesecloth so it feels like it's kind of gradating into different colors. Um, you can, if you feel like you want to just make one piece, one solid color, you can do that too. You're free to do that. But I actually prefer doing this because it just adds some interest into the actual cheesecloth. Okay, so that's pretty good. I have that wet. And now I'm going to go ahead and put that on the paper towel. So now you can see I'm going to put that on the paper towel and I'm just going to let that sit for a bit and then I will actually take a dryer but this will help to start the drying process. But meantime you can actually get another one and keep doing that. So you have a couple of pieces to work with. Sometimes I like demonstrating it twice so that you really get a sense of what to do. There's something about creating your own materials, mixed media materials to work with versus buying it because, you know, they're custom to you and your colors and your color scheme. And it's a little less expensive to make your own materials. This is why I think it's really important to make your own collage materials as well. Okay, so that's what you want to do with, um, and with your cheesecloth and you want to make a couple of strands and you can even make sure that you do a couple of different colors as well. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this. With a dryer. Okay, so this is dried and now I can just put this aside to use for my fabric paper. So now I want to show you another thing and this is coloring handmade papers. So the reason why I want to show you that is um, is because you know I get these 
handmade papers. This is like mulberry paper. It's a mixture of mulberry, washi paper. And sometimes I get these packets and there's some papers, the colors that I just don't care for. But you can actually alter them by painting them. So this is what I've done with some of my papers. You can tell, like for example, you know, this is beautiful, but it's kind of boring. It's just white, right, with petals. And then what I did is I actually added some paint to this, which now makes it much more interesting. Um, and that's kind of what you want to do is just add a little bit of color to your handmade papers. Like this was just a plain cream and now I add a little paint to it and it looks much more interesting. So that's something that we're going to do. And I'm going to show you real quick where we use that. And you'll understand this when you start diving into the fabric paper, but you can see that I actually have um, some paper in here that I painted, I actually colored like this, and then I put it into the fabric paper. So you, we are going to color some of our fabric, I mean, some of our um, mulberry paper. And very similarly to what we did to um, the cheesecloth. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down just so that it starts clean. Again, you want some extra paper towels so that you have a place to put your papers. Um, and you have to be very careful with this because they do tend to get a little fragile when you wet them. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spray this wet. And then I can just add a little bit of color to this. And like this is very, I mean, it's just white paper, but now it is coming to life when I add some color to this. I'm also using a brush that has a soft bristle, so I, I am careful not to tear this paper. Um, also, you want to be very careful not to use paper that's too thin. Okay, another thing you can do too, since this is wet, is you can actually just go in there and put little dot. I actually like to just put some marks on there. This just adds a little bit of interest. I'm also making sure that the uh, acrylic is still pretty wet on my palette. And then I'm going to put this on the paper towel. Now, if it's a warm day, you can even have them sit outside, but make sure that once they dry, they can blow away. So you want to make sure to be careful. I put rocks or something heavy on it. Okay, so now I can actually peel this off and I put it on paper towel and I'm just going to set that aside to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and 
do some more. You want to wet your paper. I just feel like this looks so much more interesting. I mean, just like that, that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna put that, since that was a small piece that went fast, so I'm gonna put that on the paper towel and now I'm going to show you quickly um, what I do with this. So here, are, here's another way to put, to make and create collage material and for your fabric paper. Um, I love using this. This is the tissue paper that sewing patterns come on. I have tons of this and it's, it just seems like um, the perfect thickness because it's still thin, but it's got a thickness to it. And then what I'll do is I actually will paint right on that. And now I have these really interesting pieces of tissue. And the reason why I use tissue paper or something like this is because when it's thin, it's much easier to work with in terms of the fabric paper. So I have, you know, some of the tissue paper that I've colored on here and it's, it's just makes, it makes it really interesting. And because it's thin enough, they kind of just melt into the fabric paper as you're creating it. Okay, so, so let's get started with this. So what I'm gonna do now is get a whole fresh palette of paint. So I put it piece of newsprint on here and you want to make sure that um, you don't dilute your paint too much when you're painting on this. So I'm actually going to mix a little bit of color. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water to it and then you can just actually on, <clears throat> paint on here. Now, if you find that your paint is not spreading as much on the paper, you can add a little bit of water. But also make sure that you are being gentle when you apply this, okay? And also you do not have to make this perfect. I, this, so you can see how I'm just kind of really just blending different colors on here because this is gonna be kind of interesting when it dries. And I know that I'm not going to use the whole piece. I'm going to actually be tearing small pieces. And then I'll go ahead and let this dry. I'm going to put that aside on another piece of paper. And then you can see this is fun this is. This is so, so cool. Um, 
Um, like I said, what I like about this paper is that it's not as thin as tissue paper, although you can use tissue paper if you want to try that. You can use watercolor with this. You just have to be very careful when you use it to glue. Um, I find that acrylic, that way you don't have to worry about it. You know, when you start collaging it into material, you don't have to worry too much about it. I'll do one more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this and then I'll show it to you after I dry it. Okay, so just want to let you know, make sure that you dry your papers in some kind of either butcher tray or a plastic plate. I noticed when I started drying it on the paper, it started sticking and the, the acrylic paint almost acts like a glue. So, um, so make sure that you put that on either a plastic plate or a butcher tray um, or a surface that it won't stick to. So these are now dried and I can now start to use this. You can see how this looks so much more interesting than just a normal blue, right? Now you have a little bit more character. So all of these are dried and they are ready to go. Um, you can do this technique also with alcohol ink, um, alcohol inks to see how that might work on the, on the paper. So that's also something that you can try. Okay, so now we're ready to start our fabric paper.